happening like I can't even begin to imagine and believe and see happening. Yet people will not receive and will not accept. Brother Doug, do you believe in the blood? It's only by the blood. Brother Doug, that's an old religion. That's old foganism. That's all right. It's what's going to take me to heaven. It's not my good deeds. It's not my righteous living because those things are filthy rags. It's only through the blood of Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior. And I trust in the blood. And I know that that blood is still able to save unto the uttermost. But I want you to stop and think for a moment. Think about the head of that household. Think about that father as he takes that lamb and as he kills it and he looks around and he sees that little brown-eyed Jewish boy that is his firstborn. And he knows that night that what God said is going to come to pass. Think about what he was putting his faith in. Think about what he was putting his confidence in. My, don't you know his heart was swelling with unbelief that the old enemy was bringing on him. But he took that blood and he put it on the doorpost and he said, I know my God in whom I believe and whom I trust and though I don't understand this and I can't grasp a hold of what the blood will do I know glory be to God that through this God will bring salvation to my household my 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 the blood of Jesus Christ it is shed only by the blood listen listen as night begins to fall Listen, it's just as God had said that day of things will begin to pass. Listen to the cries from Pharaoh's house all the way down to the least of the Egyptians as they cry and they hear and they see their firstborn. But thanks be to God as that death angel passed by and he saw the blood upon the post. He passed over that house because the blood was there. You see, the shedding of blood makes a difference this morning. You can say whatever you want to say, but if the blood of Jesus Christ is applied into your heart, you are a child, you are daughter of God and His hand is upon you and you don't have to fear what might come your way. They spoiled the Egyptians that day and they left the land of Egypt. Now you know the old devil, if you've been serving God for a while, he don't like to let up. And they've left the land of Egypt now. If you'd look in chapter 14, verses 12 through 14. He speaks and he says this, Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us along, that we may have served the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians that we should die in the wilderness. Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more. You see, that shedding of blood makes the difference. But it's by faith. Here, Brother David, the children of Israel have seen God bring them out with a mighty hand. He has seen God's blessings upon them. And yet they come and here is a red sea. Now these wise people can say, oh, it was just a sea of reeds. If it is, I want to know how the Egyptians died and was drowned in a sea of reeds. Oh, this was a time when the, when the sea was down and they could easily have crossed over. Well, how could they have crossed? And the Egyptians not across. But here they stand, the Red Sea is in front of them, mountains is on both sides of them, and they look and they see that cloud of dust that is behind them, the Egyptians. And what do they do? You listen. What do they do? You see, they've left the land of Egypt, but Egypt stayed in their heart. That's why 
you need to leave the world alone. That's why there's things in the world that you might say, oh, I can handle that. That's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. There is something wrong with that. You need to come out from the world and be a separate people. It's not enough just to leave Egypt. You need to allow the blood of Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost of God to sanctify you holy and to get Egypt out of your heart so that you no longer have a desire of Egypt. But instead of looking around at the things of the world, you put your eyes upon Jesus. Here the people began to cry and they began to murmur. They began to bellyache. I want to tell you, I want you to listen to me. I want you to listen strong this morning. You've never heard me preach like this. I know you think Brother Jerry's standing up here. But, but I'm telling you, God has given us this message this morning. God is ready to send in the harvest. And I don't want any belly aching going on. I don't want to hear no complaining. If we don't allow the love of Jesus Christ to stay in our heart and to manifest and have revival, we're going to mess out on the harvest that is coming. But I tell you what, I want us to be a people of God that has left Egypt. Egypt is out of our heart and we're looking unto Jesus and we know though we might not see the salvation, though we might not see the way, and we might not see the how, we might see the Red Sea in front of us, we might see mountains on both sides and we might see the Egyptians behind us but we're just going to stand still and say God here I am bring it on however you want to bring salvation however you want to bring victory however you want to bring deliverance bring it on but I'm not going to grumble I'm not going to complain I'm not going to bellyache and wish I was back in Egypt my 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 Listen to Moses, and he says, stand still. Stand still. Let the peace of God. You see, the devil wants us to get to run around like a, like a bunch of scared individuals. He wants to put fear in our heart about the things that are coming up on the face of the earth. None of these things just took God by surprise. God knew the Egyptians was coming. He knew where the Red Sea was. He knew there was mountains on both sides. But he knew he was God. He created that water. Moses said, stand still. See the salvation of God. I can see as Moses stretches that rod. Whew, glory be to God. You can believe it however you want to believe it. But I believe that water just stood up. I believe the breath of the Holy Ghost of God, Brother David, went before him. Dried up that land. Mm. I believe when they stepped on it was just like the land they were already stepping on in the desert. And they went across on dry ground. Can you imagine the brassness of the Egyptians? I know the brassness of this world, don't you? I know how this world gets a hold of you and it don't want to turn loose. I'm not talking down to anybody this morning. Yeah. I look around and I see people that are bound by the chains of sin. And I, my heart goes to them. I don't look down a righteous nose at them. I look down at them with compassion, wishing that they would reach up and allow God and the Holy Ghost of God to cut them chains loose and set them free and set them at liberty because it is real bondage. It is not all if, you know, if, if they would just do different, they could know they're in bondage and only the blood of Jesus Christ not rehab, not some kind of talking to them, not tough love. Only the blood of Jesus Christ will set them free and give them victory over those things. But I see these hard-headed Egyptians coming right in behind them. God gives them just enough time to get in there. I can just see, hallelujah, if you read this, and I ain't got time this morning, but my imagination flies away with me. I see the, the, the word talks about God looking through that pillar of cloud back at the Egyptians. And he sees the chariot getting a little close and he just zaps. The wheel falls off. Read it. Read it. You tell me they wasn't hard-headed? If I looked around and some of those chariot wheels started coming off, I'd be turning my chariot around. I'd be saying, God, let me get over on Israel's side, can I? Let, let, me, let me get out of this sea. But they were hard-hearted, as people are today. And when Israel got over on the other side, read the book, the sea closes them, and no one sees them again anymore, as God had said. 
You see, with the right faith, fear has no place with the child of God. When we walk in faith, God will show up and God will do the impossible. I don't want to look back to Egypt. I think about Lot's wife. She, you know, God delivered with a mighty strong hand. And she had, Sodom was in her heart. She had, the desires of this world was in her heart. And she turned to look back. But there is nothing in this world for me. I want my eyes looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. Glory be to God. I want to leave this world behind. And I want to go be with my Lord and my Savior. If you have your Bibles, one more verse of Scripture, and I'm going to try to close. Ask my wife to come to the piano. Exodus 15. Exodus 15 and verse 11. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders, Thou stretches out thy right hand, the earth swallowed them. Thou in thy mercy has led forth the people which thou has redeemed. Thou has guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. By faith, through the blood of Jesus Christ, cleansing our hearts, and the Holy Ghost working and sanctifying in our lives, we leave Egypt behind and we leave not even a hoof, not even a thought, not even a desire anymore for the things of this world because God has redeemed us. You see, I am thankful that He that has begun a good work in you will perform it, will complete it, will bring it to pass until that Day he is able. We will see our enemies defeated and we will walk in victory. Listen to me this morning. I'm going to close. Maybe I sound a little harsh this morning, but I don't mean to be. I want everyone to make it to heaven. He has redeemed you and saved you and you have trusted in the blood of Jesus Christ to wash your sins away and you have repented now hear me a lot of people are sorry they got caught but repentance is a turning sorry for those paths that I've walked in and I turn from those paths not to walk in them anymore that's repentance. But as the redeemed of God, His hand will be upon you. You don't have to fear. You don't have to doubt. You don't have to be dismayed in these times that we live. He's not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of a sound mind. Church, I believe Jesus is soon to come. I believe with all my heart Jesus is soon to come. And I want us marching towards Canaan. I want us to have left this world behind and the things of this world and to have our sights on Jesus. Listen to me this morning. Oh, I could just go naming things this morning. You think I couldn't? I could. I could call out different sins. But if the Holy Ghost can't convict you, I can't. If your heart's so hard the Holy Ghost can't work on you, then, then I can't. But I believe even as I've spoke here this morning, the Holy Ghost has spoken to some hearts. Amen. Holy Ghost has spoken to some hearts. There's some things and some lies. Whatever's in my life this morning, I want to lay it on the altar. Man, I want to have left Egypt. Everything about Egypt, I want to leave it behind. And I want to serve God as I never have before. And I rest in His confidence this morning.